Hello and welcome to lecture number 4.3 in this lecture series on digital forensics with me, Joachim Schäverstad from the University of Skövde. Uh, and for this lecture we're going to explore what is known as shell bags. And shell bags are uh, a, is a Windows internals thingy that is used to store information about uh, the graphical user interface settings for Explorer. So in essence, this is uh, the thing uh, in Microsoft that makes it possible for you to change the viewing settings for a uh, for a folder and then have Microsoft remember it. So for instance, if you're uh, if you're in a folder and uh, you go to the view settings and you select to do extra large icons or you select something else there's going to be a shell bag that tracks what you're doing so in essence you can say that shell bags are created whenever a folder is visited and then it's used by Microsoft to remember how you as a user want to to view that folder and what is nice about those from a forensic perspective is that they can tell us quite a lot about how a specific user account uh, used the computer where what folders he visited and so on and so forth if we look on criminal forensics uh, we can use the shell bags to uh, to for instance see if a user is uh, graphically exploring folders where he shouldn't be I mean we all know that sometimes uh, uh, sometimes uh, criminals tend to try to hide uh, data in obscure places somewhere down the lines of Microsoft System 32 or whatever. Uh, so that's one thing we can see if those folders has been visited or if there is a folder that is continuously visited that can be some uh, some sort of evidence. Um, and if we look at uh, uh, using computer forensics for for, in uh, for instance examining intrusions or investigation intr investigating suspected intrusions, we can use shell bags to see if uh, or to detect if enumeration attempts has been done against our computer so for instance if someone tried to make an intrusion or take over our computer and visited uh, some specific folders that we can find traces of that so how does this work or where are those stored well i'm actually going to refer to uh, the fundamental of, of dig digital forensics to see this uh, in essence there are two different places where shellbacks can be stored ntuser.dat which is the a registry file that is created for each and every user that we know about since before and there is this all there is also another little bugger that is called user class that uh, or usr class dot dat and uh, from uh, experiments that I've done uh, it actually seems uh, as if uh, at least from Windows 10 version uh, 1709 user class dot dat is where you want to look and this user class dot dat it's located in uh, in the user home folder in app data, local, Microsoft, Windows, and then user class dot that. And the problem here is those are uh, most recently used uh, files that we, uh, we will explore more of those later. Uh, those are unfortunately uh, saved in a binary convention, so they're quite difficult to read without a nice tool to interpret them. But luckily, uh, our little friend Eric Zimmerman, uh, who I've never talked to, but he seems to be nice because he's creating us loads of nice tools, uh, he created one that is called uh, Shellbags Explorer. So with Shellbags Explorer, uh, what you can do is that you can uh, download Shellbags Explorer and you can go File, uh, Load Offline Hive, and then input a user class of that file that you previously uh, exported using Access Data FTK Image or, or, or a similar tool. So there are two things that we need to know about this. Uh, and there are two interesting timestamps. It's the created timestamps and the modified timestamps. So the created timestamp is a timestamp that will essentially tell us when the folder was uh, was visited for the first time. So that is when the uh, when the shell bag is created, and then we have the modified timestamp that should show us when uh, when the view settings was last changed. Uh, and those two timestamps, they will tell us uh, they will tell if the user interacted with the folder, and it will tell you 
when the user last changed the uh, settings for the folder. Uh, but but it has come to my attention what I've seen just today is that when we yeah, where that the modified timestamp doesn't really seem to update as we wish. So when using Shellbox Explorer, I wouldn't put too much energy into the modified timestamp. Instead, there is another timestamp, as you can see way over here, that is lost interacted, that should instead be used for well as lost interacted, and it seems to be interpreted. Uh, correctly as a UTC uh, universal standard time UTC uh, plus zero timestamp. So basically how Shellbags Explorer looks is that it uh, parses this user class like that and looks for all shellbags, all traces of visited folders and just lists them. So basically what you can do is browse around here and see where a user appears to have been. So for instance we have the desktop you can see what places on the desktop that the user appears to have been visiting. So here is a folder named text. Uh, you can see that the first visit appears to have been on the 3rd of March. Um, and you can see uh, some interaction timestamps when for when changes were made. So in this case we can only say that the folder has been visited once and well uh, maybe it's been visited more times. We don't know about that but at least we know that the user visited this text folder. So for instance if there is something in here that would point me to I don't know C colon uh, we have program data that's a little bit weird we have Microsoft that's a little bit weird we have search and maybe in here we find something so data maybe data in this case would be a target for our further uh, examination. So what this tells us when we can go C colon program data Microsoft search data this tells us that the computer or this particular user has actually been visiting this folder at some point uh, at one or more times but definitely on in this case the 14th of March. So this can be very useful information because it tells us where to look uh, further in our examination which can be of course very useful. Uh, it can also be nice to see if there is uh, if you find evidence in some folder somewhere on the computer and the user says, well, I've never been there, I don't know about that folder, and you, then you can say, well, your user, user account certainly has been. And you can also use shell bags to see if there are folders that are no longer there. So in this case, you see that I have an E colon, I have a D colon, I have a Y colon, and so on and so forth. But if I look at this PC, um, I only have C, D, and E colons here. So this is a trace. There has at some point in time been a Y colon, a Z colon, and an F colon. Whatever happened to those folders? Um, so that can be uh, another interesting thing to, to continue search for. So maybe there is a USB stick or a network device or whatever. Uh, so that is a short introduction to shell bags uh, and other nice artifacts that shouldn't be missed during a forensic examination. And uh, thank you for that. Next time we will start looking at link files that are uh, even more interested, uh, interesting and uh, fantastically good. So that's all for me. Goodbye.